Hey everyone, welcome back. It's finally here. I've been streaming literally non-stop the last few days, but if you stop by, you probably have already seen these new Baruch builds, as well as the other seven projects I finished. It just takes a ton of time to edit and post them up. If you want to catch my builds as I make them live, come stop by on Twitch. I stream at least five days a week, so you'll definitely be able to catch me if you have any questions. Today, we're going to be looking at an almighty pole and an infinite red crit, Baruch updated. All builds showcased have a KPM of 120 or higher. Alright, so what has changed? Well, compared to my original Baruch video at the start of this year, everything still works, except one thing. The Nier set no longer gives general melee damage bonus. It was patched a few months after the video to only give bonus slam damage as intended. So if you're still using that Baruch build from the start of the year, congrats! It's still one of my favorite Baruch builds out there. You can just replace those Nier mods with whatever you want. But today, we take it even further. I've got two Baruch builds to show you, one focused on absolute fun, and the other focused on making Endurance Baruch as comfortable and easy to use as possible. Effortless and forgiving. It's the infinite red crit Baruch. You can't hit things with your fists? Still red crits. You get knocked out of your four? Still red crits. You fall off of the map? Still red crits. You down? Still red crits when you get back up. And even if you die, well, takes a moment, but still instant red crits. Nothing in the game can stop you from red critting instantly on the Endurance Baruch, and the damage scales infinitely too. But let's start with a fun build first. The biggest problem with Baruch, besides the scaling issues, which is irrelevant because this build is only meant for the first two hours of Steel Path, but he does scale into about level 2000 to 3000, is that it is super hard to build combo with his fists themselves. This has led to interesting solutions we'll get into later on, but the most popular options are grouping to make the punchy easier. While any of them work, there's something super satisfying about using pull to aggressively drag everything directly in front of you, which is perfect for the fisting. Because fisting them directly is the only way to build combo. Watch as everything just helplessly gets dragged to you for the beating. Reaching 12x combo Desert Wind itself makes it do 3.75 times bonus damage. Enough damage to destroy Acolytes without stripping. A pull has a bonus of being cone-shaped with higher range than most grouping tools, letting you consistently pull enemies when they spawn from only one or two directions from a further distance. Pull replaces Baruch's 1 on this build today. Because Pull is also our shield gating ability, his 2 and 3 are needed for survivability aid, crowd control, and eroding his restraint without relying on not attacking. Let's look at that Baruch build. We have Brief Respite slotted with 3 Augur mods here, 2 from our Epitaph. You don't even need to shoot the Epitaph, except maybe to slow down Acolytes, but otherwise it's just to carry 2 Augur mods. This grants us 270% energy to shield conversion. Baruch Prime has 94 shields with the Decay Dragon Key equipped. Pull costs 38.75 to cast at 45 efficiency. Casting pull will restore 104 shields instantly on this build, giving us the full 1.3 seconds shield gate. Thus, all three abilities on this build is capable of crowd controlling and keeping you alive. We also have Rolling Guard to get rid of status effects that can continue to tick and erode his 94 shields. It's also handy for iframes against violence, nullifying our desert storm since we aren't bringing silence today. Equilibrium is all we need to sustain our energy, since Desert Wind costs no energy and Baruch kills enemies so fast, you don't need to recast your 3 that often. Your 1 and 2 are bread and butter for grouping enemies and then reducing restraint as needed. That's why we modded 175 range. You might wonder why I ran a 73% duration Baruch, which is the highest I've had on him yet. The only purpose of a 13% duration is to spam Lola as fast as possible to reduce restraint. I have not had any issues maintaining my restraint low on this Baruch, and honestly any Baruch at 100% duration or lower can use lull perfectly fine. 13% is perfect for quality of life, but because I need to mod for a range and I wanted to use pull to shield gate, using fleeting expertise just didn't make sense. We obviously go sky high on strength for desert wind because we don't have any external damage buffs like stealth multipliers from if I was running silence, or warrior eclipse, or armor strip if available. So bigger strength equals bigger PP damage. Stack this with Molt Augmented and we reach 358 strength. Arcane Strike because Desert Wind by default is slow and very slow compared to conventional melee. I would strongly recommend slotting this. Reactive Storm, his 4 augment, is extremely important because it adapts the impact component of Desert Storm, aka the original non-elemental damage part into the enemy's weakness type on hit. 
A generic epitaph build with a 2 Agra mod slotted is needed to shield gate with a single cast of pull. It does prime viral and radiation, shoot it if needed, but realistically you shouldn't need to shoot it for 2 hours steel pass survival. The weapon arcane for this Baruch is going to be dexterity for both your pistol and primary to increase your desert wind combo duration by 15 seconds. The rifle you bring can be whatever, and its main purpose is just to kill violence if she spawns and nullifies your desert storm. Normally you can just use Magus Lockdown and wipe her out before she can cast her silence, but otherwise you can bring a rifle. In this case, I picked Incarnon Fenmore on a Corrosive and Heat build. You can drop the Bane for whatever you want since we're bringing it specifically for violence only. Dexterity Arcane as I said again, because it extends the combo duration for a Desert Wind, but it should be fully stacked anyways for bonus base damage since you spend 99% of the mission punching things to death. For more details on all the best ways you can build Fenmore, check out the video at the top right. My melee stat stick today is Prados. This is not a conventional stat stick. Pseudo exalted stat sticks use them for damage scaling by inheriting mods. Exalted stat sticks are used for a different reason. They inherit utility perks and set bonuses. We use it to carry three gladiator mods for the crit set bonus as we build combo and desert wind. None of the other mods matter for Baruch build 1. Today, because of the gladiator bug that makes your exalted weapon overwrite your stats the combo, we will not be touching anything with our Prados on this Baruch build. I say this Baruch build because we do actually build combo with Prados on the melee guidance setup later on. But basically, you can use any melee you want for this Baruch since you will never wield the weapon. Prados was chosen for the plus 30% parkour velocity buff to help Baruch get around easier. The one thing I will say is do not pick this Incarnon 5 Evolution perk, Universal Readiness, if you are building combo directly on Baruch's Fists. It bugs your Prado's melee counter, which will reset your Gladiator stacks on Desert Wind even if you don't ever shoot to waste ammo and pick up to give some combo to your Prado's. I still don't know why this happens, but do not use this. It is different if you are using a melee guidance Baruch though, where it is the opposite and you do want to use it. For our focus pool today, I've chosen Nerimon for a power spike, making our Desert Storm only decay by 5 combo at a time if the combo bar runs out. This is the comfiest choice since his fists have problem maintaining combo. While pull easily fixes this, this is the option for if you forget to cast pull from time to time or you just want to use a different helmet. In that case, you can use whatever focus school you want. The Desert Wind is built the same way for both the Almighty Pull and Infinite Red Crit Baruch today. We go raw crits, double mod attack speed, and pure viral. Condition Overload only affects direct fist contact and not the wave, so we don't need Condition Overload to kill enemies at base steel path, and our Endurance build uses Armor Strip, making the waves always do enough damage. I would recommend Double Sacrificial Mons if you can fit it, because it gives you a higher crit chance for earlier red crits. This is not as important for a normal Baruch, but it does matter for a melee guidance Baruch which I will show later. We build pure viral because reactive storm adapts the impact damage component to the enemy's weakness. For base steel path, that converted impact damage is already enough to kill enemies even through armor, because they are not only weak to it, but reactive storm also grants status chance. High strength Baruch easily passes 100% status, and by building viral, the majority of your hits will proc it. This doubles all your damage on the first hit, including the damage dealt by the converted element. And endurance, where we armor and shield strip enemies, viral is the most effective type against flesh, and if we face robotics, reactive storm will make it to radiation or electric, which still gets boosted by our viral procs. The other reason why we build viral now and not on my silence build from earlier this year is because viral status makes up for not forcing a stealth multiplier. Our companion today is once again a panzer as always with the standard build. The double synth set makes all viral spread by viral quills proc health orbs everywhere. You'll always be able to pick them up because of synth fiber even at full HP which gets converted to energy to fuel our pull and lull cast with equilibrium. Easy. Marta keeps you alive if you screw up, Panzer for infinite cat lives, Radar to see where to, punchy enemies next, and Vacuum. But what if you want the Gigachad infinite red crit Baruch? Actually, this build was not possible before the Veilbreaker changes to the extent I want to run it, and was improved even more so with the Archon Shard system. Baruch can armor strip with Terrify, but it requires a lot of range. It also is expensive to cast. It also only strips armor and can be nullified, and also does not strip armor for Macolites. Pillage allows him to build Giga Overshields for easy shield gating, strip armor and shields, works on Acolytes, and it's cheaper to cast. It also scales off both duration and range, letting you strip pretty far with minimal modding. 
The problem? It requires 400 strength to armor strip. We already run high strength for Rube normally, but this is still too high. Running Corrosive Projection cuts this down to 328 strength, but we want to use Melee Guidance to give us infinite red crits. Melee Guidance basically reduces combo duration by 6 seconds. If you don't mod combo duration on Desert Wind and don't use Dexterity Arcanes, this causes Desert Wind to have negative combo duration, making it impossible to build combo, and thus you cannot override combo built up on our Prados. Yes, we're building combo on our normal melee when we use a Melee Guidance Baruch strat. Overriding combo causes a bug that resets gladiator stacks to zero if your combo bar decays even just once. This is a problem exclusive to Baruch, even though it exists for all exalted melee, because Baruch is the only warframe that has difficulty trying to build combo with his exalted melee. That's why on a conventional Baruch build, you never swing your normal melee. Desert Wind would decay its combo bar while your Desert Wind is active, losing all gladiator stacks. In exchange, you maintain 11 times gladiator stacks regardless of Desert Wind combo if you use melee guidance. You keep it even if your forward deactivates, not even if you fall off the map or you down. And if you die, I chose the Prados because it's a Tonfa and also has awesome Incarnon perks. The Sovereign Outcast Stance has insane horizontal range and multi hits, making it a joke to build combo. You can instantly build back to 12x combo within seconds and can reactivate your forward to get instant red crits again. The cost of this perk is not getting that sweet 3.75 times damage bonus Desert Wind would normally get if we build a 12x combo. This doesn't matter though, because we're bringing Pillage to full defense strip for infinite scaling. And the waves still do several hundred thousand damage against full stripped enemies at level cap, which is enough to one-shot fodder. But if we use melee guidance, how am I hitting 400 strength? Enter Archon Shards. This build reaches 382 strength with Molt Augmented. Just two red power strength shards will push us to 402, allowing Pillage to strip 100% armor and shields of any enemy in the game with a single cast. This also means we don't need Matarai, which would let us do it without Archon shards, but it's much more irritating to maintain combo on our Prados if we don't take Nerimon. Alternatively, you could take Vazarin because this does scale into Endurance. Pillage scales off both duration and range and hits out to 37 meters on this build despite having just 100% duration and 73% range. You can uncast it early if you want shields back sooner, and it also cleanses all status effects. And casting it with at least one Augur mod on your loadout means you regain immediately partial shield gate even on the initial cast. This gives you another 0.33 seconds gating even if your shields break immediately before your pillage comes back. Combine this with Rolling Guard, and this Baruch is basically invincible to everything except taunts and damage. You have infinite red crits no matter what happens, you have full strip everything forever, you can easily shield gate without briefer spite, and you still have arcane strike for faster punchy, a free slot for streamline for even easier energy economy. This build uses Epitaph again. The important part is this time, you do not want to use the Dexterity Arcane. In fact, you do not want any kind of combo duration arcanes or auras anywhere on this Baruch build because we need his fist to have 0 seconds combo duration or lower. You full defense strip enemies, so you shouldn't need to prime them. Reactive Storm adapts your fists to their weaknesses, and we're still building pure viral fists to proc viral status on enemies to multiply our damage further. Full strip flesh is also weak to viral damage itself, too. Our Prados will actually get used to build combo this time, however, the option to use this Evolution 5 Universal Readiness perk is massive. This is the perk that screws over other Baruch builds, but you want it for melee guidance setups. When you pull out your gun while your 4 is active, the game changes your active melee to the non-exalted on the back end. This means if I pick up ammo even while my 4 is active but holstered, it will build combo on my Prados instead. This lets me maintain combo on my Prados without ever having to uncast my 4. You just take whatever rifle you want, max out fire rate and reload speed mods, shoot a bit and reload it. This will suck up an ammo pickup due to your companion's vacuum, restoring 5 combo on your Prados and resetting the combo duration to max. That's the only purpose of the primary slot in this Baruch, otherwise run whatever you want. You don't have to run that Incarnon perk on Prados though if you don't want to since I know it screws with normal Baruch builds and swapping every single time you want to use a melee god in some Baruch is annoying compared to the normal one. The gladiator bug I'm mentioning is what's present in the build 1 Prados timestamp, which you can find in the description for a better explanation. The normal way to use a stat stick melee on a melee god in Baruch is to build combo on the stat stick itself. That's why the Prados is modded for a max attack speed, a bonus range, combo duration, and bonus combo chance. 
This makes it pass on the 11 times gladiator stacks as quickly as possible. And on this Kratos, it literally takes 3 seconds to go from 0 to 12x combo, which is why I chose it. Gunblades like Vastalok or Redeemer work extremely well too with a similar build, you just don't get the plus 30% parkour velocity bonus, or the option to use the reload ammo pickup trick with this Universal Readiness Evolution 5 Incarnon perk. So how often exactly do you need to uncast your fort to fix Prado's combo for gladiator stacks? If you're using the ammo pickup trick, never. But if you don't use it, our combo duration is 24.5 seconds. If you use double sacrificial mods on your Desert Wind, you have 352.5% crit chance for reds. If you use just Sacrificial Steel alone, it's still 325% crit chance. But the double sacrificial set does not drop your Desert Wind below 300% crit chance for guaranteed reds until you go under 180 combo. Naramon makes combo decay by 5 every 24.5 seconds on this Prados. Going under 180 combo will take 220 seconds, or over 3.5 minutes. This means even if you don't use the ammo pickup trick, you only have to come out of Desert Wind once every 3.5 minutes. Hit some enemies for about 1-2 to two seconds, and instantly get back to 12x combo. Then, recast your 4. It's that easy. Same companion build is earlier to synergize with Equilibrium on our Baruch. See build 1 Panzer timestamp for a full explanation. If you want to use Vaz or Normatter on this build, I would strongly recommend using Prados. You will have to refresh the Prados combo duration every 24 seconds by deactivating your 4 and touch an enemy once or twice with your normal melee. But if you're using Prados, you can just shoot your gun while in your 4 and the ammo pickup from the Incarnon perk I mentioned earlier will instantly set the combo duration of your holstered Prados back to 24.5 seconds. Otherwise, even if you lose the Prados combo completely, it only takes about 3 seconds to build it back up on a crowd to 12x. Up to you on what you prefer. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or, better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to bring out new information out always as soon as possible, like I've done with the 2023 Baruch build. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.